Yeah, very good morning and uh, thank you, Dr. Shanta and uh, thank you, Dr. Namrata, Dr. Rajesh Sinha, the AOS and uh, the Santan team for this opportunity to speak to you all. Uh, I'm going to speak to you about the uh, importance and the impact of uh, long-term IOP control in the management of uh, glaucoma. Uh, we all know that uh, currently our glaucoma management sometimes depends on just a single uh, IOP measurement or what we call as uh, spot measurements or a snapshot measurement of the intraocular pressure measurement during clinic hours. And, but we also know that IOP is not just a fixed single value for a given. It's not like the height of an individual. It actually fluctuates and uh, it can fluctuate and vary with blinks, eye rubbing, can vary through the 24 hours called the diurnal fluctuation. It can vary in the short term over days and weeks. And of course, over the long term, over years and months. So sustaining a constant IOP and reducing the peaks of fluctuations may be as important as achieving a target intraocular pressure for the effective management of glaucoma. So then you may ask me as to what is this so-called normal fluctuation and what happens to normal individuals, what happens in glaucoma individuals. In, normal, in the normal population, the mean intraocular pressure is said to be about say 14 plus or minus two standard deviations and the short-term IOP fluctuation is measured to be around four to six millimeters of mercury. Uh, these uh, IOP measurements which are taken through the day, and, uh, for a, a typical individual, the IOP will peak in the morning and early afternoon maybe, and actually troughs in the afternoon and at night, and there may also be some spikes of the IOP on waking up in the early mornings. Whereas in glaucoma in general, it's associated with higher fluctuations. So this is the picture of the so-called 24-hour IOP uh, diurnal in uh, normal as compared to glaucoma. You can see clearly that the uh, fluctuation of the intraocular pressure in a 24 hour uh, period is much higher in the glaucoma individual as compared to the normal. But the normals also, there is a fluctuation in the pressure and there's a little slight peak at the waking time. The uh, circadian variation in intraocular pressure, that is the variation in 24 hours for a normal individual can be up to say four, five and six millimeters over the day. But for a glaucoma patient, an eye with glaucoma, the fluctuation of circadian variation in 24 hours can be much higher. So what are this, this is a, one thing, I just wanted to highlight this publication and paper which shows us what actually happens to the fluctuation in different glaucoma subtypes. In normals, as I already mentioned, it's about four to six millimeters of mercury. In glaucoma subjects, it could be about 8.3 to 2.5 plus or minus uh, the standard deviation. And the normal tension glaucoma, the peak is, is mostly nocturnal, but the short-term IOP fluctuation is also slightly higher. In PACG, the fluctuation is definitely higher. In ocular hypertension, also the fluctuation is higher than normal. But the uh, significant and very high uh, fluctuation or very high peaks, especially in the afternoon, can be noticed in secondary glaucomas. And the IOP fluctuations can sometimes vary between 15 to even 40 millimeters of mercury in secondary conditions like pseudo exfoliation and other conditions and so on. So keep in mind that a static snapshot of the intraocular pressure with the one single reading is not enough. We need to look at IOP through the day. And as Dr. Manish pointed out, it's, it's practically difficult to do a 24 hour perfect measurement of the dynals in most patients. So what we do is we do a day variation to measure pressures in the morning, afternoon and the night in different parts and different times of the week and month. So we get an idea of what the pressure is like for the patient. So one may ask, how does this actually the fluctuation cause damage to the patient and cause damage to uh, what happens to the glaucoma because of this fluctuation? So the regular circadian IOP variations, the nocturnal elevation, the IOP may actually cause damage, which is undetected by the IOP level measurements during office visit. And the elevated nocturnal IOP combined with the drop in the BP that occurs during sleep may compromise the optic nerve head perfusion in susceptible individuals. In patients with glaucoma with an exaggerated nocturnal dip in the BP have been found to have a significantly high disease progression rates as well. And uh, irregular and large IOP fluctuations, such as the, the, the normal rhythmic regular cycles of IOP peaks and troughs are normal. And there are compensatory mechanisms which takes care of this peaks and uh, troughs. But if this steady state of this normal fluctuation is disturbed by irregular elevations of the IOP, or if compensatory mechanisms are faulty, then the damage is more likely to occur. So some, some studies have clearly shown as that the relative risk of glaucoma progressing in about five years 
when the diurnal iop range is low is very low as compared to the diurnal iop range of 5 or more the relative risk of disc progression or the disease progression within 5 years is quite high so this is a study which i think all of us might have read in the past this is the advanced glaucoma intervention study which has shown that the larger long term iop fluctuations are associated with greater odds of visual field progression which means that in eyes with fluctuation of more than 3 mm showed visual field progression and every millimeter of iop fluctuation increased the odds of visual field progression by 30% so therefore in multivariate analysis the iop fluctuation is an independent and strong predictor than the mean iop for visual field progression so keep in mind that even in the long term this has to be kept in mind a recent meta analysis also showed that the long term iop fluctuation was a significant risk factor for visual field progression this is not just one study like the ajas multiple papers multiple studies and uh, if you look at the overall hazard ratio it is very clearly telling you the combined hr was 1.43 and uh, definitely shows that the long term iop uh, fluctuation is a significant risk factor a japanese study in uh, in ntg showed that the risk factors for progression included disc hemorrhage long term iop fluctuation and of course a large cup disc ratio so what then should be the ideal target uh, fluctuation uh, uh, iop by which, which which you should keep in mind fluctuation in intraocular pressure is less essential in early disease or it may take longer than the typical 5 year study period to demonstrate the effects of iop variation in early glaucoma so we need to look at the stage of the disease and decide is fluctuation important for that particular eye and how soon or how late this can affect the patient there is no widely accepted target iop fluctuation and i suggest that the range could be less than 5 mm for patients with mild glaucoma less than 4 mm mercury for those with moderate glaucoma and less than 3 for those with advanced glaucoma there are of course many other considerations in addition to these uh, this guideline including the corneal thickness the rate of progression and so many other factors which we discussed earlier so or, or how do we deal and how do we uh, decide what to do for a particular uh, modality of treatment as far as 24 hour iop control is concerned as my dr manish pointed out the prostaglandin seem to be the ideal as far as uh, uniform 24 hour iop uh, level control with once daily dosing reduces the fluctuation and flattens the iop uh, spike that happens on waking up timolol doesn't do much and it has a lower efficacy as far as intraocular pressure has low nocturnal efficacy and uh, of course you all know the effect uh, that uh, timolol has uh, something called the escape and the long term effects of timolol uh, it tends to drift and uh, the efficacy drops over many years of usage carbonic anhydrase inhibitors Uh, their nocturnal efficacy is better than timolol but not as comparable as the prostaglandins brimonidin has a low nocturnal efficacy uh, combinations among the combinations pga the prostaglandins with timolol seem to be better than other fixed combinations like brimonidin timolol caa in timolol in reducing the mean diurnal iop slt also reduces the short term fluctuations but uh, essentially works like one single drug and may not be as effective as a uh, combination therapy or uh, surgery surgery seems to reduce the diurnal iop fluctuation much more effectively than anything else that we know of so in patients who are advanced glaucoma and progressing despite everything else we do surgery seems to be the answer uh, talking about one particular drug which i have uh, come across recently uh, is daflucrost which has demonstrated the significant long term iop lowering effects across various types of glaucoma and the mean iop was significantly reduced in patients with all types of glaucoma over 2 years 24 hour 24 month period and similarly there have been studies which have shown that tafluprost may actually uh, improve and preserve ocular blood flow and uh, this is shown in this particular study from uh, japan how does it work it's supposed to inhibit the et1 modi- uh, mediated vasoconstriction and thereby uh, reduce the uh, and to improve the ocular perfusion as compared to latinoprost which doesn't do so and of course the uh, prostaglandin drugs like tafluprost have shown excellent long term visual field stability as compared to latinoprost over 3 years with no significant changes in the visual field and associated with stable visual fields in a significant number of patients so to cut my uh, story short a take home message despite conflicting research results iop variation does seem to be important in the evaluation and management of patients with glaucoma not only is an ideal mean target iop needed but we also need to consider a target for iop fluctuation and clinicians have to be cognizant of the risk factor 
maximize the strategy to detect the fluctuation and tailor the treatment particularly in vulnerable patients to show progression despite achieving target intraocular pressure thank you